What's up, everybody? And I hope you guys are enjoying your wonderful evening or afternoon. And this is going to be a very exciting video for those who love the tropics, specifically the Atlantic, uh, especially the Atlantic. And that's because this is going to be my video. This is going to be a video on my first thoughts and uh, first preliminary forecast on the 2021 hurricane lake season and what I think will happen. Again, this is my first thoughts, my first predictions. Again, guys, don't take this 100%. Like, uh, don't like mark my words on this because this is a very, very early forecast. Again, it's still, uh, it's still winter, so this is very early, which is why it's my first thoughts video. So, again, this won't be, this won't be 100% accurate. I don't even expect it to be 80% accurate, but I'm hoping it's the most accurate information I can give you based on how, how far we are from this season here. Obviously, June 1st marks the, the day, the first day of the hurricane season, and we're obviously. Still on February 20th, so quite a long time from now. So this is going to be my first thoughts looking at long-range models, see what they have, obviously, looking at the data we have right now. And then based on that, I will be making my own forecast on who can get the most landfalls, most activity. We'll be seeing how much storms, how many hurricanes, and how many majors. All of that will be upcoming in this video here. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get into this very exciting video. So where I want to start off is looking at the, uh, this is the latest Enzo forecast here published on February 11th. So nine days old, it should, the new one should come out in the next few days, but this is what they have so far between January and all the way up to November here. Looking at what we can see, whether it's a La Nina, neutral or an El Nino. And for those who don't know, La Nina are typically, typically La Nina seasons typically favor more activity in the Atlantic and a bit less uh, activity towards the, I guess, uh, EPAC or Eastern Pacific here. So La Nina typically an average, I mean, an average La Nina year, not every single one, but an average and typical, usually La Nina years do bring in a lot less year across the Atlantic and warmer SSTs or sea surface temperatures. And that allows for, of course, more activity and obviously more long track systems across the Atlantic Basin. So that's kind of what you want to see. If you want to see more activity, typically a, a La Nina or at least a, a, usually an Enzo neutral. But as you see, of course, through January and March, we do actually have a 100% a, uh, chance for a La Nina here. And those start to decrease as we get towards May. And we are seeing a very high La Nina throughout, obviously now almost guaranteed all the way up to areas like potentially March, April, May. We actually do have a 60% chance for a La Nina. But as we get between April and as well all the way up to July, we actually do actually have we do actually have a 60% chance now for a neutral. So we actually are going to po possibly see this La Nina make its way towards a neutral. And neutrals actually do favor as well, um, depending on whether it's a weak or strong neutral, do actually favor quite active seasons, obviously, but nothing close to what we see like in 2020. But it they do favor above average seasons. So we're still looking at a potential La Nina or neutral here for the months of, I guess you could say, the early summer. But obviously, the, the peak is September and October. And as you look, we do actually have a higher chance for uh, a La Nina between August and October at a 40, around a 48% chance. And between... Uh, September and November, we actually have a 55%. So you can kind of see in the most active months, we do actually have a higher probability for a La Nina. So kind of in the, the midsummer, early season between May, June, July, June, July, and August, kind of these aren't the earliest months, but where we have kind of the least amount of activity out of these out of the season, we have a higher probability for a neutral. So obviously a neutral isn't bad. It could still lead to a quite active season above average, but between August and November, we actually do have a higher probability uh, for having a, uh, a La Nina. So definitely something to keep in mind here. SSTs right now, they are looking at still, we do have a weak La Nina at the moment. We kind of see these warmer temperatures are popping up frequently across the central and eastern Pacific here. You can kind of see Nino 3.4, of course. You got Nino, uh, obviously, I believe this is 1 and 2. And then you got, I believe, Nino... Uh, uh, four over there. So you can kind of see these regions are starting to warm up uh, quite a bit, but we still have right now at the moment an official La Nina where we do have kind of a weaker status than what we did see last month, but still seeing a significantly uh, significant cold central and eastern Pacific, especially in areas uh, in the dead center central Pacific. However, 
waters are starting to warm up off the coast of South America and starting to really warm up in these spotty areas across uh, across the Central Pacific and as well off the coast of Central America. So we still have a Nina at the moment. However, the SSTs are starting to warm up a little bit. So that could lead that the Enzo forecast could be quite accurate, that we will start to lead up to a Enzo neutral. And I do, I do believe that it's actually, that's actually pretty reasonable. I don't see us having a La Nina or like a strong La Nina throughout January to December this whole year. I do see us getting a neutral at some point, And I do believe the most likely or, I guess, reasonable point when that happen will be uh, right now. We're not right now, but potentially getting into next month, or if not, maybe even early, early April. So, as you see, we were at a very strong uh, La Nina early, early, uh, or actually late fall, uh, getting um, in the in the mid negative ones. There were at least negative one point two, negative one point three, and then we we slowly been going really, I guess, a roller coaster. We've been going up and down, up and down. Uh, mainly, we've had an upward trend between November all the way up to, I guess, late, late December. And then we kind of had a even kind of not really nothing, no spike, no, no really spike of activity, whether it was favoring a stronger La Nina or a weaker La Nina between much of January. But ever since we've kind of got into February, we've had had a big increase in the values. You see the latest value is negative 0.63. And the La Nina border is negative 0.5. So we're getting very close to getting a neutral status. Obviously, though, just because we get over or just because we get uh, negative 0.5 to anything, I guess, in an upward trend like that, it doesn't mean we are at, we're automatically in a neutral because you would have to keep that, that neutral status for at least, I believe, three or four weeks to actually officially call it a neutral. So... Doesn't mean we're going to get to a neutral anytime soon, but if it continues any upward trends, we could actually see the Enzo neutral. Um, we could see our status being at Enzo neutral for at least three weeks straight, which will lead to the neutral, which will kind of, kind of, I guess, aim for end of March and early April if this trend continues. So, uh, we did see kind of a really big upward trend, of course, between January, late Fe January and mid February. However, we did kind of see it go straight down. So. Is there a chance that we have kind of a roller coaster event where it goes straight up and then back down? There is a chance, however, I do believe as we start to continue throughout the month into now March, I do believe that SSTs will continue to become more, I guess, warmer and allowing for a weaker La Nina getting towards a a neutral. And something I really want to compare, obviously, you would think I would compare 2017 and compare to 2020 or I guess 2005 really, really active hurricane seasons. But what I want to actually compare it to is 2011 because the most similar, I guess, atmospheric conditions we're seeing at this moment, February 20th, 2021, is very similar actually to 2011 here. And 2011 did actually have a rather active hurricane season. So you can kind of see this was the forecast here by Enzo or the Columbia University here. The end of prediction for the 3.4 region here, you can kind of see whether we're seeing a La Nina, an El Nina, or neutral. So these are kind of different colors because obviously this was 10 years ago, but La Nina is blue, neutral is green, and as well the uh, uh, El Nino is red. So obviously, we really, I guess you can compare 20, 2005, you can compare 2017, which were very, uh, very strong, have very strong hurricanes, but... I want to kind of take a look at 2011 because not only did I compare 2011 and 2021 for the tornado app or tornado season, upcoming tornado season, but I really want to compare them for the um, for the hurricane season because you can kind of see there you see February, March, and April we actually do actually have a 95% a chance for La Nina in 2011 and then it gradually went lower and then the neutral probability became a lot higher after I guess May. You can kind of see me actually move this a little bit. Let me actually get my mouse real quick. And you can kind of see that we're seeing very similar outcomes. So you can kind of see January, February, March, 100%. February, March, and April at kind of 80%. February, March, and April a little a little higher than May uh, or March, April, and May. March, April, May is around a 60% chance. And then it's around a 75, 74% there for 2011. So obviously it's not identical, but it's, the, I guess, the most similar you can kind of lead to because 2017 was supposed to be a very strong El Nino. I mean, every single model had an El Nino for the 2017 season. But you can kind of see, we're seeing very similar outcomes here. Kind of 
really high chances between obviously February and all the way up to areas like April. You can kind of see the same thing here. But gradually as we get into the dead the dead center summer between obviously April, May, June, or I guess uh, May, June, July, uh, we can kind of see as we get towards the early and mid summer, the Enzo probably does increase. Same thing for 2011 there. By June, uh, by June, July, and August, we do actually have a higher probability for neutral. Same thing for uh, May, June, July. So May, June, July, we can kind of see there we have the neutral probability. So it doesn't mean we're going to be seeing a 2011 season, but 2011 was actually the fourth tied. It actually is tied for the fourth most active season uh, for the, the Atlantic. I believe it did bring in 20 storms here. Um but really seeing some similarities. Not only are we seeing similarities for the actually Enzo forecast, but we're actually seeing as well similar outcomes here as well for the SSTs. This is obviously we can't just comp we can't just compare the Enzo forecast to make a, a prediction or make a comparison. We also kind of have to look as well at what we're seeing here for the actual SSTs, the actual events or the actual atmospheric conditions here. Uh, so you can kind of see that we're seeing a big blob of very cold temperatures across much of the central and eastern Pacific there, um, across the Pacific in the, uh, especially the 3.4 region there. So in 2011, we did see, I believe, 19 named storms, which is above average. So like I said, I do believe the 2021 hurricane season could be above average, above average activity, hurricane storms, majors. I do believe it, it'll all be above average, but I just don't see it being way above average like 2020 or 2005 i do think it'll be between um between a slightly above average to moderately above average so you can kind of see some areas very warm temperatures especially right in this region here across uh 3.4 you can kind of see uh, you can kind of see the same thing. Similarities there. Very cold temperatures across the 3.4 region. And we're just seeing little small details that are very similar. Like right here we saw right there this island right here of uh, very warm temperatures just off the northwestern coast of South America and, and near uh, Central American coast. Same thing there. Really warm temperatures across northwestern South America as well. The Central American coast. Same thing. Southern, uh, kind of, we saw those colder temperatures near southern Hawaii. Same thing there, those colder temperatures near southern Hawaii. Very warm temperatures across the southern Pacific. Very warm temperatures across the southern Pacific here. Look at this similarity. Very warm temperatures are across the southern Pacific right now. And then very warm temperatures. Obviously, the warmer temperatures will a lot more widespread, though. But you see very warm temperatures, of course, across the southern Pacific. So, as well, really warm temperatures are across, in general, the uh, western Pacific very warm temperatures in general in the western pacific so we're just seeing those small details uh you can see even some small details where you kind of see some small areas where warm water is kind of popping up same thing we're starting to see now some warm water kind of popping up not only in, in similar areas but almost the exact same areas here you can kind of see breaks of warm water so obviously this does a little small comparison here um but let me go ahead and check a look at what the long range models actually have to say so this is uh, the can sips here at bulk shear, so the blue does signify below average shear. So this is kind of what we're looking at in May, or this is what we're looking at in April. So I do, I don't expect any storms in April, but I do expect there's a chance we can get an early start of the season here, whether we see a storm in mid a mid May or possibly even end of May. So I do think we will be seeing a early start to the hurricane season this year. Uh, I don't, I'm not sure about two storms, but I definitely do see one storm at least one storm forming the Atlantic Basin before June 1st. So this is April. You see a very little shear across the whole uh, the whole uh, Atlantic. But as we now get into May, this is when things will sort of get towards the tropical activity, especially off the MDR. This MDR, in my, in my opinion, the MDR this year will be quite active, whether because we are actually supposed to see a very strong monsoon off Africa this year as well are supposed to see a lot less shear in the general region here so we're not looking at like 2020 when the whole western Atlantic was getting so many storms while the MDR wasn't really producing that many storms here at least at least the low pressures were struggling to form in the actual MDR some did form later on once they got out of the MDR because it was just there was so much shear so much dry air like we saw that that dry or that Saharan dust outbreak uh, in June and July, which limited limited storms. So I do believe this will not happen this year. I do believe we, the MDR will be, and generally, generally the MDR this year will be quite favorable for storms in my opinion. And as we get to June, obviously, we will have some areas where we get some really 
decent amount of shear here, but we're looking at, in general, a lot of areas that we'll see very minimal shear, especially across areas like the uh, at least western MDR there near the Virgin Islands there in the Lesser Antilles. But July, really looking at a big area across the uh, Atlantic Basin, especially in an area to watch, especially after last year, the Western Caribbean there, really looking at the Southern and Western Caribbean. We're going to be seeing some minimal, actually very little shear across the general region in the month of July. August, same thing, really little shear, especially as well in the, uh, I guess, the Central Atlantic, seeing very little shear as well. But we don't, we obviously don't, don't see storms form off this area. We kind of see these storms off Africa kind of form in this general area here. So, Obviously, if there's a lot of shear, or like we're seeing, according to the hand sips in August, we won't have too much activity, but we could see some storms definitely brewing in this region here, according to the hand sips, as we will be seeing minimal shear. Obviously, shear is not the only thing. You also kind of you also got to look at the uh, the moisture, whether it's dry or whether it's wet. Obviously, you also got to look at the SSCs. There's a ton of things. Uh, there's a ton of things ingredients that have to occur. So just because we see uh, an area of little shear or just because we have an area of above average shear doesn't mean doesn't really mean the whole outcome of the whole month so obviously with the keep that in mind all the way into october we're going to be seeing uh some d uh, very little shear across the western caribbean and portions of the mdr and into even november seeing some very little shear across the western caribbean and southern and southern caribbean so really watching this whole region right here in my opinion gotta really watch uh, this general region here, uh, the Western Caribbean throughout month, much of the season. And I'm really watching as well for the MDR for the, um, I guess, early season, May. I could see an early start there in May. And as well, I could see in the early season, like June and July, we could see some decent amount of storms coming off the MDR. Not only coming off the MDR, but possibly becoming trouble systems in the actual MDR. We did not see that much last year. We only saw one or two uh, systems actually form as a name system in the MDR this year, or last year, I guess you could say that, because there's just so many areas that were unfavorable. I mean, if a system tried to form this year or dry or just cut it off. So it's really as well, another area we got to really watch out is the precip precipitation as well. Just, um, I guess, moisture activity for the next few months here. So really watching into April, May, and June, really watching a big area of a ton of precipitation across the MDR. So obviously that doesn't include too much. I'm really uh, looking for for decent activity, May and June. Obviously more activity towards June, but I do expect maybe one or two storms in the month of May. And then to May, June, July, this precipitation will move more toward the MDR or at least favorable portions of the MDR. Really watching as well these areas where we could see some low pressure develop. And if we have a strong monsoon, we are looking at a very favorable area based on the Kansas for at least moisture wise. Same thing, you kind of see the same thing for the, uh, you can kind of see um, June really uh, looking decent, May looking kind of decent, but really got obviously get a lot closer to actually give it a get, good look. And so now J July, August, and September, still seeing a big area of moisture. So we are looking at a potential massive African monsoon that bringing constant moisture into the uh, into the ocean. And then to September, October, November, watching above average uh, precipitation across the Western Atlantic. So that's obviously something you need to keep in mind. But let's go ahead and jump into my actual forecast here. So I guess you got a little spoiler by what I just did. But this is what I think, this is my shear anomaly here. This is based on long-range forecasts, based on comparing other seasons, just based on the, the fact that we actually may see a uh, potential La Nina at the end of the season, including the peak season, September and October, as well considering we may see a neutral in the early season, uh, considering July, and then the mid-season, including August. So that's just all that. And we have, everything I just showed in the video is part of what uh why i made my maps the way i did but let's go ahead and jump into it so this is my shear map or my i guess shear forecast so i do see much of the atlantic ocean at least areas where storms develop in the atlantic ocean to see below average to average shear here it doesn't mean there won't be doesn't mean there won't be times where we see a ton of shear it just means throughout the whole uh june 1st and november 30th that whole time from i see in average in general these areas will be seeing below average, if not average. So I do expect a very large area to see well below average shear, and that's going to be for much of the MDR all the way up to the Western Caribbean. Models, long-range models, um, are predicting and shoving a big area, at least wave of well below average shear, 
for at least two to three months, uh, which will take over a lot of the season, obviously, because then you got June, July, and August, and then you got um, September, October, and November left. And I do see that's obviously going to be towards the MDR, a little area where we will be seeing potentially well below average shear. So we're going to be seeing a decent amount of um, decent amount of shear uh, that won't be present, uh, at least in my opinion, that would be in an average year. And then we have three areas that I think we'll be seeing slightly below average shear. So that's going to be towards the north central uh, Atlantic Ocean there. Uh, kind of areas where we don't see too many storms so it's kind of really won't impact much but it will just leave a big area for storms that maybe slightly move north to get some room and breather where they won't be shear pressing on their back another area i do see some sh uh slightly below average shear across portions of the uh northeastern coast and eastern corridor all the way up to areas like nova scotia and newfoundland kind of a small area we will be seeing kind of towards um below average shear but only slightly below average shear and then another area where I think we'll be seeing slightly below average shear is areas like the Western Caribbean and much the Gulf of Mexico. And the reason why I have slightly below average is because throughout June 1st all the way to November 30th, there will be, throughout those months, there will be mainly, uh, it will mainly be below average. However, we will be seeing more, t more uh, I guess, events or at least more time of above average shear than what we're seeing in the MDR. And then at my second or my third region is the third shade, I guess, and that's going to be generally below average. So it's not going to be well below average. It's not going to be slightly below average. So it's kind of going to be in the, in the middle, I guess you could say that. So this is going to be my uh, this is my uh, activity uh, forecast here. So the red signifies above average activity. The orange signifies average to so slightly above average activity, and the yellow signifies average or below average. And activity just means there's either storms in the area or landfalls. It doesn't mean landfalls. It doesn't mean hurricane landfalls. It just means activity in general. So activity doesn't mean actual landfalls. It just means there's a system in the area. So I do think we have a very we have a very large area of red here. And the red obviously signifies above average activity. So that's going to be throughout much, in my opinion, the Western, the Western Caribbean in there. To the Cayman Islands, much of the Caribbean Sea, at least the Southern Caribbean Sea, and as well a big area of below of uh, above average activity there across portions of the uh, eastern and northern Caribbean, all the way up to south south uh, southeastern Florida. So I do believe we could be seeing a a lot of activity in these areas, at least in this whole region, because of the MDR potentially being very favorable. And long track systems they actually changed to yellow. Uh, long track systems kind of moving this way because the MDR is just super favorable. So I do believe we will be seeing a, a kind of between 2017 season with the MDR. Not as active as 2017. Obviously, 2017 was absolutely crazy with the, with the MDR. But I do believe we will have more activity in the MDR than what we saw last year. Because last year definitely was not a year for the MDR. And same thing. The MDR will be producing more storms, and it's going to, if they move more towards the south, we'll be seeing a lot of storms like we did see last year. And as well, if we have super warm temperatures across this region and we have a, tr a low pressure, it could become tropical. A tropical load will develop here and then it'll make its way towards north like we saw last year. So I do believe, oh, uh, here's kind of the general thing. I think we could see a 2017-like MDR. It doesn't mean it's going to be like the 2017 but I do think it's going to be more towards 17 than it was in 2020, the MDR. And then I see more of a 2020 Western Caribbean season. So I do think we'll be seeing, in general, a very, very uh, wise for activity-wise, including the MDR, including the Caribbean, including the Gulf, and as well, including the southeastern coast. And as well, another area more inland in the Gulf, we do actually have another area where we will have potentially above-average activity. And that's going to be towards Louisiana, all the way up to the western panhandle across Florida. I do believe we could see a lot of storms that move in this region here, uh, whether it comes from a storm developing here that can obviously make its way that way, or things that come from the western Caribbean in another area. I do believe we will have some above act activity across this region here, uh, across portions of the Yucatan uh, Peninsula there. I do think we will be seeing uh, quite a few uh, storms here. And I know these areas don't see too much activity, so it won't take much. It doesn't take much to have above act activity across areas like the uh, Bay of Campeche, or I guess the Western Bay of Campeche. Obviously, the average is, I mean, we barely see too many storms here. So, again, it won't take much to get a red here. So, I do believe we could get some 
some storms developing this region here as we will be seeing a warmer base campeche i do believe some storms could actually move this way again the red the activity does not mean landfall so you don't have to have an actual landfall to be in the red here it just means there will be above average activity so it means there could be more storms in the actual area that die before landfall and that's exactly why that you can potentially at the western what you can have in those under a red because it could be there's storms near the area like this or there's actually an actual landfall like this here so that's kind of what that means and then the orange will be seeing towards average is slightly above average activity so that's anything from average to above and that's going to be across portions of much of the texas coast there portions of cuba jamaica and the central caribbean western coast of florida and as well portions of the carolinas those are areas where i do think we could see anywhere from average activity to slightly above so we could maybe see a few more systems moving these areas that or we can see average amount so it's kind of just a broad forecast again we are very very far out and then the yellow i do believe we will see average to below average activity and that's including the northern florida coast all the way across areas of south carolina of course i do believe the northeast will be below average this year so again based on that these are the areas this is kind of example of these are i guess samples of tracks i think could occur moving across the mdr we could see out to sea systems if the bermuda high is very strong it could lead to out to sea systems like we saw last year that's kind of what we saw a very little amount of eastern caribbean systems obviously not including zayas and laura and then i do believe of course the hot spots will be this year activity wise gulf of mexico western caribbean MDR and as well portions of maybe the southeast. That's just an example there. Hurricane landfall probability. So the red signifies very likely, orange potential, and yellow unlikely. Again, guys, this is a preliminary forecast. Do not take this 100% uh, correct. I mean, this won't be 100% correct, and I won't be surprised if this is 50% correct. I mean, it, it, it's it's far out, so please don't take this literal because this is just a literal. This is just a a forecast. A preliminary and first thought forecast. So the red signifies very likely. So I do believe there's a chance we could get some hurricane landfalls across portions of these red regions. That's including areas like Nicaragua and Honduras. I don't. I didn't. I didn't put that just because of what we saw last year. I just believe uh, with the the pattern, it's looking very favorable for a very active Western Caribbean, especially if the MDR, if the MDR is going to be, I guess, being the pitcher. That's going to be allowing for a lot more storms to make its way towards the western atlantic and that's why that's even why the eastern caribbean is under a red because the mdr is looking a lot more active this year so i do believe more hurricanes or a stronger system will move in the region including puerto rico there portions of the the virgin islands there and i even have southern florida and portions of western cuba under the uh, red for the same reason there so we got we got a, a decent amount of reds there, including the Central American coast there, New Nicaragua and Honduras. I also have another red there for the uh, Cancun region and the Yucatan Peninsula. Uh, same reason there. We are going to be seeing a very active Western Caribbean this year, in my opinion. So that's going to be putting the eyes straight on Yucatan. Um, there in Texas as well, I do believe we will be seeing quite an active, uh, I guess, hurricane-wise, quite an active Gulf of Mexico. You can see a lot of the Gulf of Mexico is under at least an orange or a red. The red stretch all the way from Texas all the way to portions of the western panhandle. So there we have a very likely percentile of seeing a hurricane. It doesn't mean we're we'll seeing 18 hurricanes or 10 or a lot. It just means we will at least see one hurricane in these areas here. And that kind of explains why we do have um, a, a only a orange there across the New York City region. I do believe there's a chance maybe... I guess moving in the area towards northeast, but again, it's it's only potential. Potential doesn't mean likely. A potential is only like a, a I guess, thirty to forty percent chance. So we do also have oranges across Cuba, portions of the further northern coast of Central America, portions of uh, northern Mexico there, and we do have yellows now across areas that are way unlikely to get hurricanes like Belize. The Bay of Campeche, like I did say, Bay of Campeche, just because you guys are above average activity doesn't mean you guys are going to get an actual hurricane landfall. And that's why you guys are under a yellow there. You guys won't really be seeing at least a hurricane, in my opinion, maybe a tropical storm. A yellow as well for Georgia, South Carolina, or Southern South Carolina, Northern Florida coast, Cayman Islands, Jamaica, Mid-Atlantic coast, and as well portions of the New England. I do think we have a very unlikely chance of seeing a hurricane. And then we have another red there near areas of the Outer Banks. I do believe there's a good chance for a system 
to make its way near North Carolina coast here. And this is my major hurricane percent. So the red equals decent chance, orange, small chance, and yellow, very unlikely. And capital, very, because it's going to be very, very unlikely. We see a major hurricane in these areas that are under the yellow. But we do have reds across portions of the Bahamas, far southeastern Florida, portions of the uh, Caribbean and two other areas across the Gulf of Mexico. I do believe we can see a decent chance for a major hurricane this year across the western panhandle of Florida and as well portions of Louisiana and far northern Texas coast, like kind of where Laura hit or Delta. And I do see uh, Puerto Rico, Turk and Caicos, uh, and northern Cuba to see a uh, decent chance for a hurricane because I do believe we could be seeing some similar tracks like 2017. For example, Irma is very likely to occur, or an Irma track, not identical, but a type of Irma track covering the MDR, strengthening to major hurricane these areas. I do believe at least one storm like that is possible. And then the orange, a small chance. We have a small chance there across portion of the Keys of Florida, southwestern Florida, the eastern Bahama Islands. Uh, I do see a small chance for a major hurricane across the Yucatan Peninsula and Western Cuba, Nicaragua, and Honduras. A small chance for a major hurricane across uh, the British Virgin Islands, um, portion of the U.S. Virgin Islands. And I do see a small chance for a major hurricane across Louisiana, Mississippi, and Alabama. And another small chance there across far southern Texas and northern Mexico. And then a very unlikely for a major hurricane landfall is across portions of the St. Lucia, Granada, I also do see a very low chance for a major hurricane, obviously, for the Northeast and Mid-Atlantic. I just don't see that at all. I don't think anybody else does. Very unlikely chance for a major hurricane across much of the, uh, for much of the Northeastern Florida coast, Georgia, South Carolina, uh, uh, Western Florida coast, portions of Texas, Yucatan Peninsula, sorry, not Yucatan, uh, the Bay of Campeche, and as well, portions of Central America, and as well, I do see very unlikely to see any major hurricane make its way at least towards this region of the Caribbean. Kind of just like maybe a storm to move this way or something like that, kind of staying out of those regions. And here's again another example of a potential tracks that occurred this year. And this is kind of my general forecast so far for this season here. I do believe we could see uh, possibly seven, 17 to 20 storms at the moment. 7 to 10 hurricanes, and 3 to 4 major hurricanes. Again, guys, these numbers will change significantly as we get towards June. So I expect these numbers to change a lot. Again, this forecast is a first thought video. It is, this is not probably going to be super accurate whatsoever. So again, please, please just consider that before you make fun of the forecast or anything like that. So again, these numbers can get lower, they can get higher. We will see. But I hope you guys enjoy the video, and bye, guys.